Howdy y'all, I'm Carson Umbarger with SC Traditions. Now I built this channel on the backbone of outdoors, but no matter how hardy of an outdoorsman you are, you gotta love a snack. And for me, one of my favorite snacks is good old fashioned popcorn. But you know, for me, microwave popcorn doesn't really cut it. I tried this recipe on a stovetop and oh my lord, I fell in love. So I'm gonna break it down for you today. But also kind of like I've mentioned in my past videos, I'm a history major about to graduate with my bachelor's degree in history, so we don't just do how to cook the recipe. We also fill you in on a little bit of the backstory, the unique, interesting backstory that needs to be remembered of our certain recipe. And today, y'all are watching A Taste of History, Popcorn Edition. Now, one of the amazing things about popcorn is how simple and little you need to make it. You don't have to be a master chef. Besides toast, I would argue it's just about the easiest thing to cook in the kitchen. So let's go over the ingredients here before we get into throwing them in a pot. So like I said, super minimal on the ingredients. All we're gonna need is some olive oil. Of course, your popcorn kernels that you can pick up at the grocery store for super cheap. Little bit of butter to finish it off. Everybody loves some good buttered popcorn. That's what makes popcorn good, you know what I mean? And some salt. We got some sea salt here that I can crank to taste. All right, y'all, so we're gonna get ourselves three tablespoons of olive oil. Now the pot, I get it, it looks huge, but we gotta remember, popcorn expands to over 50% of its original size. So when you throw that one third cup of popcorn in there, it's gonna near to fill up this entire pan. I know it's crazy to think about, but that is the case. So we're gonna take our three tablespoons of olive oil here, stick it on the back eye, and we're gonna stick it on a medium to high heat. So if you're using kind of a standard 10 notch oven, I'm going on heat about six. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head Fahrenheit what that equates to, but that's what we're gonna do, and we're gonna wait for that oil to heat up. And then how are we gonna know that oil's heated up? Well, super simple answer there. We're gonna take this popcorn here, brand new bag, awesome, quick, fresh popcorn, and we're gonna take about two or three kernels like that, and just drop them down there in the bottom. What that's gonna tell us is as soon as they pop, we're gonna know that popcorn is ready to go in and ready to start popping for us. So while we're waiting for that oil to get hot, and I promise you, it will not take long, but let's go over the history of popcorn just a little bit. So popcorn derives from Mexico, and it comes from a grass there, just like all the rest of corn. Whether you knew it or not, that steak you're enjoying, you're a lot closer to cows than you think because you like grass, because guess what corn is? Grass. Nonetheless though, y'all, it originates from a grass that the Aztecs took and raised up to turn it into corn. And when they heated this corn, they realized that some of it, when heated to extreme temperatures, will pop. It actually physically, within the corn, the water molecules build up so much so that it creates a gelatin, and eventually that gelatin expands to a point that the kernel cannot hold it, and it goes pop, and it creates a soft foam. And the soft foam, in the time that it's kind of flying through the air like popcorn does, hardens. And that's how you get your squishy, nice popcorn. Back to the Aztecs, though. When Europeans first come to the New World, they notice that these Aztecs are eating corn in all types of various different ways. And popcorn, well, it's not really a big thing, but they mention it and it gets back to Europe and people are reluctant to grow corn. Corn is kind of seen, and this is not my opinions, this is the opinions of the time, corn is seen as a subsistent food. It is not good enough for the elite Europeans to eat. It is only eaten by the lesser peoples Native Americans, which we know obviously now that is a very ethnocentric mindset, but at the time that's what these Europeans are thinking. Over time though, conditions are tough and you have to eat starchy foods. And one of the superfoods of the North American continent is corn. So eventually Europeans come around to the idea of corn, but popcorn still doesn't really quite find its stride until the 1800s. Around the 1800s, it becomes a very popular campfire food. People actually start breeding specific types of popcorn. Corn that is raised to be popped exclusively. But it still isn't quite at its full effect until the 1900s come along. In the late 1800s, a man comes to the World's Fair with the first ever popcorn cart. And what the popcorn cart does is it pops the popcorn while tossing 
it in seasoning. That beautiful salty, that beautiful Parmesan, that beautiful caramel, whatever kind of flavor you like. It originates at the 1893 World's Fair. I cannot remember off the top of my head where that World's Fair was located, but that's where popcorn first comes from. So they take this popcorn and it becomes a super popular street food on all the major American cities. Unlike a lot of street food, it is not an immigrant food. It is a food that is wholly American. That's one thing, when people ask you what's American food, now you've got an answer, popcorn is American food. But they take this, and where's the most popular place that you think of popcorn now? Probably the movie theater. But movie theaters don't adopt popcorn until the Great Depression. Popcorn is seen as a very messy, nasty street food that you don't want to bring into a high-class establishment theater. The Great Depression hits, though, however, and sound movies come around, so all of a sudden, you have people who can't read but can watch movies now, so it's lost a little bit of its high-class establishmentarianism there. And people are poor. Popcorn's cheap. But for the movie theaters, popcorn is a new possibility to turn a major profit. Thus, popcorn in the movie theaters is born. And popcorn finally hits its major stride in the thing that I said I don't really like it in anymore microwaves in the 1980s. That's when popcorn faces its huge hurrah. You get your Orville Redenbacher, you get your Pop Secret, you get your Act 2. All of those amazing microwave popcorns that maybe we take a little bit for granted. And I gotta say, my Pop Secret is one of my favorites. That's the origins of popcorn and a brief history. And we actually just had our popcorn kernel pop, so that means it is time to mix in our third cup of popcorn kernel. So what we do y'all, we pull the popcorn off the hot eye. We then take one third cup of popcorn, throw it down there, and then we're gonna remove it from that heat, we're gonna keep it removed from that heat for 30 seconds. That 30 seconds is gonna make sure that all the popcorn is up to the same temperature. And as you can kinda see in the prelude to the video, we had some popcorn flying everywhere. So that's why we throw the top on it. So let's count to 30 seconds here. We probably are down to about 20 now. So let's wait just about 20 seconds. Boom, 20 seconds. All that popcorn has come up to the same temperature, theoretically. And we're just gonna throw it back on that heat. We're gonna bring that heat down just a little bit because it doesn't really have to be that hot anymore. The oil is gonna do most of the work here. We're gonna clean up our handful of popcorn pieces that went flying everywhere. And now we're just gonna wait for it to stop popping. This is the easiest part of the job is to just sit and wait. But somehow, you know, for some reason it feels like it's the longest part of the job. And she's done. Y'all, this is about to be fun. my mercy this is hot oh yeah look at that so we're gonna take our popcorn here throw it down in there there's a couple kernels left unpopped but hey you know that's okay we got our popcorn here we got ourselves about a tablespoon of melted down butter we're gonna throw it in there we're gonna take a little bit of this sea salt here There we go, cranking it the wrong way. Get yourself a bowl with a lid like this. Toss it around. This is where it's fun to get the kids engaged too. Let's give it a taste. Oh y'all, that smells like straight out of a movie theater. I ain't even kidding, I ain't even kidding. It's probably a lot healthier for you than a movie theater too, well as healthy as popcorn can be. That's good. That's really, really good. Man, the salty, the buttery, not too buttery. If you like a lot of butter, throw some more butter in there, honey, but that's just good popcorn right there. It's not soggy. Mm. Y'all, don't pass this up. This has been a taste of history with SC Traditions, and I can tell you, it's a heck of a lot better than that hardtack we ate on the last one. I'm going to eat the whole bowl if I ain't careful. 
Thank y'all for watching. Stay tuned, like, subscribe, and do all that good stuff. I'm going to keep stuff in my face if you like and subscribe. Let's get it to 50 subscribers. We're going to do something special for that. Show them. See y'all later.